Beta-2, beta-2, adrenergic receptor agonists, also known as adrenergic beta-2 receptor agonists, are a class of drugs that act on the beta-2 adrenergic receptor. Like other beta adrenergic agonists, they cause smooth muscle relaxation. Beta-2 adrenergic agonists effects on smooth muscle cause dilation of bronchial passages, vasodilation in muscle and liver, relaxation of uterine muscle, and release of insulin. They are primarily used to treat asthma and other pulmonary disorders, such as COPD. Mechanism of action Activation of beta-adrenergic receptors leads to relaxation of smooth muscle in the lung, and dilation and opening of the airways. Beta-adrenergic receptors are coupled to a stimulatory G protein of adenylyl cyclase. This enzyme produces the second messenger cyclic adenosine monophosphate, CAMP. In the lung, CAMP decreases calcium concentrations within cells and activates protein kinase A. Both of these changes, inactivate myosin light chain kinase and activate myosin light chain phosphatase. In addition, beta-2 agonists open large conductance calcium-activated potassium channels and thereby tend to hyperpolarize airway smooth muscle cells. The combination of decreased intracellular calcium, increased membrane potassium conductance, and decreased myosin light chain kinase activity leads to smooth muscle relaxation and bronchodilation. Adverse effects Findings indicate that beta-2 stimulants, especially in parenteral administration such as inhalation or injection, can induce adverse effects. Tachycardia secondary to peripheral vasodilation and cardiac stimulation. Tachycardia can be accompanied by palpitations. Tremor, excessive sweating, anxiety, insomnia, and agitation. More severe effects, such as pulmonary edema, myocardial ischemia, and cardiac arrhythmia, are exceptional. Asthma aggravation has been observed in patients using large doses of beta-2 agonists, but if it results from spontaneous course of the disease or adverse effect of the drugs is not known. The excipients, in particular sulfite, could contribute to the adverse effects. The possible loss of the bronchodilator activity of beta-2 mimetics could be attenuated by inhaled corticosteroid intake. Delivery All beta-2 agonists are available in inhaler form, either metered dose inhalers, which aerosolize the drug, or dry powder inhalers, which dispense powder which can be inhaled. Salbutamol, IN, or albuterol, USAN, and some other beta-2 agonists, such as formoterol, also are sold in a solution form for nebulization, which is more commonly used than inhalers in emergency rooms. Salbutamol and terbutaline are also both available in oral forms. The nebulizer form is as effective as administering the drug intravenously. In addition, several of these medications are available in intravenous forms, including both salbutamol and terbutaline. It can be used in this form in severe cases of asthma, but it is more commonly used to suppress premature labor because it also relaxes uterine muscle, thereby inhibiting contractions. Risks on November 18, 2005, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration FDA, alerted healthcare professionals and patients that several long-acting bronchodilator medicines have been associated with possible increased risk of worsening wheezing in some people, and requested that manufacturers update warnings in their existing product labeling. On June 29, 2006, Cornell University and Stanford University researchers reported that a meta-analysis they conducted found that regularly inhaled beta agonists or chiprinoline, metaproterenol, alupant, formoterol, foridil, fluticasone plus salmeterol, cerevant, advair, and salbutamol, albuterol, proventil, ventolin, volmax, and others increased the risk of respiratory death more than twofold, compared with a placebo. While used to treat chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, on December 11, 2008, a panel of experts convened by the FDA voted to ban the drugs Cerevant and Foridil from use in the treatment of asthma. When these two drugs are used without steroids, they increase the risks of more severe attacks. The experts said that two other much more popular asthma drugs containing long-acting beta agonists, Advair and Simbicort, should continue to be used. Types. 
They can be divided into short-acting, long-acting, and ultra-long-acting beta, more specifically, beta-2 adrenoreceptor agonists. Generic name Trade name Short-acting beta-2 agonists, Sabas Betoterol Tornalate Phenoterol Baratec Isoprenolin, in, or isoproterenol, USAN Isoprel Levisalbutamol, in, or levalbuterol, USAN Zopnex Orchiprenoline, in, or metaproterenol, USAN Alupin Pirbuterol Maxair Precatorol Ritodrine Utopar Salbutamol, in, or albuterol, USAN Ventolin Terbutaline Bricanol Long acting beta 2 agonists, LABAS Arfermoterol Ravana, some consider it to be an ultra laba. Bambuterol Bambec, Oxal Clenbuterol Dilaterol, Spiropent Formoterol Foradil, Oxus, Perforamist Salmeterol Cerebent Ultra long acting beta 2 agonists Abiditerol Carmoterol Indicatorol R. Captain Neohaler, U.S., Andres Brieseler, E.U., RU Olidatorol Striverdi Respimat Volantorol With umiclidinium bromide Anoro ellipta With fluticasone ferroate Brio ellipta, U.S., Relvar ellipta, E.U., RU Unknown duration of action Isoxaprine Mabuterol Zilpaterol Zilmax Society and culture Beta-2 agonists are abused by athletes and bodybuilders as anabolic performance-enhancing drugs and their use has been banned by the World Anti-Doping Agency except for certain drugs that people with asthma may use. They are also used illegally to try to promote the growth of livestock. A 2011 meta-analysis found no evidence that inhaled beta agonists improve performance in healthy athletes and found that the evidence was too weak to assess whether systemic administration of beta agonists improved performance in healthy people. See also Discovery and development of beta-2 agonists References External links Beta adrenergic plus receptor plus agonists at the U.S. National Library of Medicine Medical Subject Headings, MESH